Hey y'all, this is Ben Bush from Auburn University, Industrial Design. Uh, so what did I choose to do, podcast style? Uh, let's be honest, I'm not as pretty as John McCabe or Owen Foster, so that's an easy selection. And if I had things like, ideally how I would like this to go, is like me and you would just be walking and, and talking about this project casually. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm uh, going to take a walk from the Industrial Design Building kind of across campus and we'll see how far we get. So I want to talk to you about this uh, international collaboration sprint that we've been doing. Um, we've worked with IT Carlo in Carlo Island for gosh the past 15 maybe 20 years and um, I'm always incredibly thankful that they keep on letting us come back. Uh, they kind of derail part of their curriculum. They always make space for us um, in their curriculum but also in square footed so I'm thankful that they keep on saying yes and working on these projects with us and when we're in Carlo we're there for like two and a half days and within these two and a half days we do our 24-hour design sprint uh, previous projects that we've done we would all meet up at the IKEA in Dublin about two weeks before we'd actually um, hit Carlo on our leg of the journey and the students would team up. We'd have two U.S. students to four uh, IT Carlos students, and they'd spend 30 euro to buy a collection of items. Then they would actually hack them or kit bash these uh, pieces together to make something altogether new. And really enjoyed this project. Um, really strong outcomes. Really good experience for both sets of students. This year, particularly, the the government kind of threw a curve at us, which was good and, and challenging. Um, their Board of Education, uh, what do they call it, the, the Higher Education Authority announced this great merger between like rival schools, IT Carlo and Waterford IT. And they'd be joined under one banner and they would be called the Southeast Technological Institute. And the fun thing is these institutes are like 50 miles apart from each other and they're going to have to figure out a way to link in all the faculty, come up with new programs and share their joined five campuses. Uh, the bulk of the project was designed and developed by senior lecturer Hilary Dempsey, and he noticed this trend that kept on happening across the UK, but actually happens in the United States a lot. When you have a uh, growth of the university, they become more and more alienated from the cities they were put there to serve. So what Hillary did, he said, what if from the very beginning we wanted to purposely integrate the city and the university together? I mean, so often students want to go to a university because of like the life and the culture that's around it. Um, and yes, a university can have that, but like different universities have their different flavors, and it's a large element. If you lose that element, you're just, in, in a sense, copy pasting. So how do we avoid that from the very beginning? So Hilly challenges students to imagine a future where the integration, um, the culture of the city, the culture of the university would be unified and strengthened from the very start. And uh, pretty quickly, as we started talking about this project and how it might run, we realized that you know, when you do complex systems and multiple stakeholders, that our students aren't really ready for these projects. I mean, these students just finished like design foundations, visual hierarchy, craftsmanship. That's where they're at in this part of the journey. And services, systems, dealing with large amounts of ambiguity or more reserved for like your advanced students, your older juniors, your seniors. But study abroad, the way that we run it, happens during the sophomore year. So, like, this is what we got. So, let's go. Uh, we needed to have uh, guide rails instituted for these students. So, this is what we did. We wanted to arrange leadership. We wanted to give the students content-relevant lectures. And we knew we wanted the students to identify three stakeholders from the very beginning of the project. So, why leadership? Over the, the course of years, we've seen that there's this awkwardness in the beginning stages. Like everybody wants to be polite and cordial, and I'm good with all that. But we only have 24 hours, so this like hesitation starts to uh, really eat into their ability to move a project forward. So we assigned it to the most senior uh, level IR students. Problem fixed. Let's go to the next thing. Content relevant lectures. Uh, we never attempted this approach in the past, but it seemed like the right thing to do. The students would get a design crash course. When did that golf cart get past? Um, the students would get a crash course in design methods, user research, interviews, sustainable practices, um, how do you gain community buy in, all of that. 
Um, just felt like if we didn't give these students who we already knew they were coming into the project um, a little bit under equipped, if we didn't do that, it would be uh, rather reckless and uh, maybe just a bit lazy. And last of the stakeholders. Uh, with most of the previous year's projects, the students would pick a demographic very much like themselves. Um, we know that students play an important role in campus life, but with the integration of city and campus and administration and faculty body, there's just so many stakeholders that need to be factored in for this to be successful. So we said, you gotta have these stakeholders. So we kicked the project off. Uh, we share the project brief with the newly formed teams late afternoon on Monday. Uh, the American students meet the Irish students. They talk about life and culture and music. Uh, I used to think that the social time diminished like the quality of the product, but I'm actually rethinking this a lot. Like, which is better? If I had to pick one of the two, which is better? Lifelong bonds with a designer from a different culture on the other side of the globe, or one really good project where you pulled an all-nighter and you got an A. I'll, I'll talk about more of this later. Tuesday morning, first thing, we have three back-to-back -back lectures. We have uh, Dr. Simon O'Rafferty, who works at a design firm in Dublin, and he just crushed. I mean, design methods, design research, how to get them to sing for you. I was sitting in the back of, my, back of the room like, preach! Content was just like amazingly useful and amazingly good. Then we had Diamante Stank. Wait. Might be a good time to tell you like this is a Friday before the first football game on Saturday. So like this place is popping right now. It's about third, fourth golf cart. It's about uh, 80 degrees, partly cloudy, uh, tents are everywhere, students are buzzing. You know, it's giving you a, a, a little picture of what I'm seeing right now. Where were we? All right, um, Diamante, where are you on my list? Here we go. Uh, Diamante Stank of Halt, really have a tough name to say. We'll just call it Diamante. Uh, spoke about our grassroots efforts to push for sustainability uh, in the local community, and then. Minister Malcolm Noonan, who serves as the Minister of Heritage and Electoral Reform, talked to our students about creating and gaining support for positive environmental impact uh, and the difference between designing with people and designing for people. The cool thing about his position, it's called the Charta Dula, uh, which is like a one-for-one -one position that we would call a senator. And so the senator basically came to our class and lectured to us. So we were humbled and like, wow, this is, this is something that would never happen in the States. Uh, so, with the three lectures, presentations on the belt, the students break up across the building, start to identify a problem, and decide, you know, what three stakeholders should they choose? And this one quickly evolved from, like, what should we choose to who can we talk to? It would be great to have someone who's in the decision-making point of uh, the gov governmental education body and talk to them. But if you can't get to them, it's just conjecture. So who, would you, who could you talk to to get the most uh, amount of information, the best amount of information? I believe the ignorance of the American students, uh, being in a new location, not knowing the, the history of the town, how the Irish higher education system works, that, that helps. But at the same time, uh, guessing can make you look really dumb. So we pushed the agenda of like, yes, pick your stakeholders, but like go talk to those stakeholders. They're going to tell you the stuff that we don't know, and they are, they are your source. If you want your project to be successful, go out and talk. By the end of day one, some groups have really strong directions, and some are, are still getting there. Uh, past experience have shown that a lack of decision by the end of this first day is pretty detrimental. Um, I also remember seeing some sad faces. That was $5 right there. I also remember seeing some sad faces because they go out and they try to get research, and they're like, well, no one's talking to us I'm like yeah because this is really how it works so everyone has a direction so we give them the option uh, we break for dinner allow students to choose how they spend the evening um, they can be in the studio working or they can be on the town and at this point I don't think there's a wrong path to either choice next morning everybody meets up there's an energy this is about like the 16th hour of design sprint everyone's on top of it um, some are synthesizing their research some realized they needed to go out and talk to people, so they were doing that. And this lasts for about five hours until we get into the home stretch. And I know something very different about the home stretch this year in contrast to the previous years. 
the previous years, a team, they would make a sketch and the sketch would make a model. After a small model, they'd make a full model, photograph it, and then do presentation slides. So people who were part of the team would always be waiting on the next level, and then for that would be finished. So this one, I think, like with the future-oriented posture of the project, it made it easier to create a narrative, and everyone bought into that narrative and knew if I did this part, it fits into that part of the presentation. So it was enjoyable to see so much um, work, yes, but also like simultaneous buy-in for this future-oriented project. We gave the teams seven minutes to do presentation, and then the faculty gave the students feedback. In terms of the stakeholders, there were three parties that were the most popular. These stakeholders were university students, university faculty, and the quote-unquote community. Uh, community was a bit of a moving target, because sometimes it meant like non-academic individuals, sometimes it meant local business, uh, sometimes it meant like young families, and unfortunately, the groups weren't able to nail down any type of consistency with the demographic of age, occupation, local involvement, or the community members in their research. So that comes were good. Um, and at this point, I want to guide us towards the case study, and we're going to specifically focus on groups three and group six. Group three, they proposed a collection of stacked raised plant bags to function as community gardens that would span the one kilometer space between the center of the campus and the center of the city. The stakeholders they proposed were university students, university food services, and local homeowners. And after talking with the University Food Service, they learned a pretty good amount of the food was compostable and they could use it more efficiently. The stakeholders they interviewed said they wanted more access to green spaces or mixed use spaces. Uh, additionally, they said 75% of local residents claimed they would use a community garden if it was available and 68 said they would like to join a horticultural society. I thought one clever avenue that this group took was there was abundance of leftover acrylic, so COVID-19 acrylic sheets at basically, basically every intersection. So they were going to use these acrylic sections, repurpose them to make um, the structure for the elevated plant beds. Uh, switching over to group five, it was a much different solution. They wanted to create a makerspace slash innovation lab in the center of the city. Uh, they focus on creating attractive student housing, a fabrication studio, presentation area. Uh, they were very intentional about locating the space at the intersection of the city's transportation in infrastructure. And the proposal, it covered three stakeholders, uh, which were the students who wanted to gain industry relevant professional experience while they were at school, uh, local business owners who wanted fresh ideas and cost effective labor, and decision makers who have say over academic buildings, academic programs, perhaps what I would call like city council people. So those were their stakeholders. In the research, they noted that 75% students would live downtown if the housing was attractive and if it was an opportunity to gain uh, relevant professional experience. And instead of doing a, a physical model, these students pitched a brochure, infographics, and their final deliverable. Uh, at the end of the presentation, group five actually revealed that they had six stakeholders. They had university students, university admin, business owners, local government, landlords, and community members. So that's a look at the project. Let's go back and talk about the three interventions. The first one, assign leadership. I feel like 80% good about this decision. It definitely had a positive outcome. Students knew who to look for decisions. Um, they knew who to look for for decisions additionally. Um, these students had the most experience at the university and they will likely see the outcome of this merger. So definite positives to that. And yes, it was very relevant, but my reservation is, what if the most senior student isn't the best leader? Just because you've been at school the longest doesn't mean you have the personality or the experience to be a leader. It just means you've been there the longest. So this is why I have a slight reservation. In terms of bringing in the speakers, once again, absolutely the right thing to do. But I was disappointed how seldom the kicked off lectures were referenced in the final presentations. Uh, maybe they didn't fully understand them. Maybe the speed of the project limited their implementation. Or maybe students already had in mind what they wanted to do. Uh, and then the stakeholders. 100% 
this is the strongest part of this prompt. All right, so number one, they had to engage the local audience. And if you're gonna be a study abroad, if you're not gonna engage, like the abroad part of the study abroad, you're just moving to a new location to be there as a tourist, you're missing such a, a fantastic opportunity. So <laughs> forcing, planning, encouraging students to go out and meet people who are similar yet dissimilar, who are gonna have different views and cultural differences, this is good. I mean, this is, I feel like the reason why you have study abroad in the first place is to broaden the mind via interaction with people who are not the people you grew up with. Uh, number two, sometimes the questions that they asked the stakeholders didn't yield the answers they expected, which I know they were sad about as I, as I talked about earlier. They, they thought they had good questions. They thought it had a good direction and then it got jacked up because of what somebody else said. So there's a, a level of managing ambiguity that they haven't experienced before. They had to wrestle with the feedback and ask better questions. And the third one that I thought was really great from the stakeholder integration was they had to do ethnography um, in the field opposed to in the classroom. So, so much more of a, let's see this thing in practice and learn, instead of let's learn this thing via theory. One thing that I didn't get to explore in my paper that I would like to is like this element of competition like listen I love competition I come from like a sports family sports background and I think it does create great outcomes but I'm learning that it's not always beneficial group three our first one who had the raised plant bed they had an answer to every question that I posed they, they it felt like they had to be right if one element of the design was inferior the entire design was inferior so it's like sure you won the competition but you failed the class type of feeling. It's like they had just enough information to validate their ideas right, but I don't know, it just felt artificial and forced. Oppositely, group five was quick to mention that there were still large unknowns in their presentation. Um, one of these unknowns was how to acquire the space, how to equip the space, how to make it adhere to university standard protocol. And even when you have like that maker space, that innovation lab, how do you divide up the profits or the intellectual property? If I could go back and reframe the competitive element, I think I'd say I care less about uh, the physical shape or the final deliverable. I really want you to be the best at knowing people, knowing their wants, understanding their context. This next bit didn't make the paper, but I still think it's super neat. Uh, because of the study broads, we're moving every two to three days. I get the uh, the privilege of eating breakfast with my students and so I was over here in this conversation and it probably is one of the best conversations about uh, where the future of design uh, might go. So they were arguing slash debating, politely arguing, uh, about the purpose of the project. So this was I think a, a Tuesday morning right before the lectures and one said like hey listen we're industrial designers it should be physical. Um, this is stuff we've been trained to do it can have a physical outcome. This is the direction we should go. And the other student was striving, like advocating the upper opposite side of uh, the spectrum. The, the student felt like there needed to be something bigger. You had to consider so much more nuance. Um, and it was more of a, a challenge to balance all the inputs than saying, hey, this is the one situation, the one size fits all for your situation. Enjoy. Maybe the best part of that conversation was that it was between a boyfriend and girlfriend, so it was equal parts passionate as it was polite. I just, I really enjoyed it. Uh, back to reflecting on the project. I love how I, I saw light bulbs turn on. When you have students doing ethnography and design methods and doing like this level of research and it's their first time and you've never seen like this cohort engage that level, you get really excited about the potential of like, if you started them this young, what could happen? And if you teach long enough, you you get that double-edged sword of like, they've experienced it, but will I get to see it come to fruition during their time here? Will it hit during the senior year or will they graduate and realize this was a really important learned lesson? I don't know, I hope to see it, but there, there's no guarantees there. I love how the project gave them the experience with managing conflict and user feedback and working through ambiguity I think that delivering a brief that's beyond the student's current capacities gives them a slice of humility that I think is really important for all designers. 
Uh, it delivers a stance of, you know, I don't have these skills developed yet, but now I see the advantage of developing those skills. Experience is so useful as a designer. And I think young students are so eager to prove that they have it all down. They are the A, they are worthy, they are the good designer now. Um, I've done this internship, I'm the best sketcher in the class, my work is on the wall, my stuff has been published to render weekly, and all these accolades are good, but within the context of being competitive with and or against your classmates, I think it pushes them away from really getting to know people that you're designing for. So how can we create projects that puts our students in the situations that test their curiosity and allow them to realize that their assumptions are wrong? I'm going to leave it at that. I'm kind of leaving this uh, conversation incomplete and open-ended because I am super looking forward to seeing uh, all the professionals and educators that I haven't got to talk to in person for the last couple of years. So, yeah, let's continue this conversation. I'll see you all in Seattle.